In this video, we deepen our understanding of partial derivatives by working through a geometric example. Specifically, we dig into the multivariate function for determining the volume of a cylinder. Alrighty, so here is my terrible sketch of a cylinder, but you get the idea. So the volume of a cylinder, shown in blue, is equal to pi, 3.14, and so on, the constant, times the radius squared, r squared, times l, the length of the cylinder. So we can calculate the partial derivatives of v with respect to r or with respect to l. For example, the partial derivative of volume with respect to length for a cylinder, del v del l, is equal to this here. So let's break it down. Recall that for partial derivatives, as we saw in the preceding partial derivative video, that we treat any variables that are not being differentiated with respect to as a constant. So if we're differentiating with respect to length, then everything else, so we're gonna differentiate length, but everything else, the constant pi, including the variable r squared, are treated as constants. So according to the constant product rule, also known as the constant multiple rule that we covered in detail earlier in these machine learning foundation series on differentiation rules, this everything here, all this constant, can be left alone while we calculate the derivative of L. Now, according to the power rule, L is actually L to the power of one, and so when we use the power rule on it, L to the power of one becomes one times L to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is simply one, and one times one leaves us with one. <laughs> So we've seen that kind of thing happen with the power rule many times, again, from earlier on in this machine learning foundation series, when we were talking about differentiation rules and working through examples. So there should be nothing surprising about what we're doing with derivatives here. The only thing that's new is that we're treating a variable, r squared, as a constant, because we're not differentiating r squared here. So we leave that as a constant, now we have pi r squared times one after we take the derivative of L. And that of course just simplifies to pi r squared. So what does this mean? Well, what this means is that a change in length L corresponds to a change in volume by pi r squared. So this tells us that as we vary length, that will correspond to a change in the volume of our cylinder overall by pi r squared. So as this length becomes longer or shorter, the volume is equal to pi r squared. And you might even be able to see that visually if you kind of pause the video and think about that. But let's do a hands-on code demo where we can actually see it with some numbers and make sense of it there. All right, so returning to our subject for calculus two notebook, we're now in the partial derivatives of a cylinder volume section. And you do have this neat little function here in Colab where you can see the table of contents. <laughs> so it makes it easy to find the section that we're in. And so the volume of a cylinder, as we saw on the slides, is described by V equals pi r squared L, where r is the radius of the cylinder and L is the length of the cylinder. So we can encode that formula for cylinder volume in a Python function here. We're going to need to pass in R and L, and then we simply return pi R squared L. Okay, so that's the formula. Now let's use automatic differentiation in PyTorch to do some calculations. So let's say that the radius of our cylinder is three meters. So we can encode that in a scalar tensor and since we are going to be computing the partial derivative with autodiff, we need to track gradients on the tensors that we're differentiating with respect to. And that includes the radius. It also includes the length. We need to do that for the length as well. And let's say that the length is five meters. You can put in your own numbers and play around with this. All right, so once we have our input tensors, we can then flow those input tensors 
through our cylinder volume formula. So that's the forward pass. And that tells us that the volume of the cylinder with a radius of three meters and a length of five meters is 141.4 cubic meters. And since we tracked gradients contagiously through the forward pass to V, we can now go backwards, do the backward pass, perform automatic differentiation back through the function to our input tensors R and L, and we can see what the partial derivative is. So del V del L comes out to 28.3. And we can confirm this manually instead of using automatic differentiation by using the partial derivative formula that we derived on the slides. So on the slides, we determined that del V del L is equal to pi R squared. So that's simply pi times the radius R. Remember we set R to three up here, squared. So the same number, 28.3. Whether we figure out the partial derivative manually and then do the arithmetic ourselves, or we rely on auto diff to do it, we get the same partial derivative. So this means that with a radius of three units, a change in length by one unit corresponds to a change in volume for the entire cylinder of 28.3 cubic units. <laughs> so assuming that we have a radius of three meters and our length is one meter, then this is 28.3 meters cubed. And we can prove this to ourselves. So we can see what this really means. So we can use our cylinder volume function to calculate what the volume of the cylinder is with a radius of three meters and a length of six meters. So that's 169.7 meters. And this contrasts with what we had earlier when we had less length. So with a length of five meters, we got 141.4 meters. And guess what? That difference. So if we take the difference between those two volumes, 169.7 minus 141.4, represented by these two separate terms here, we get 28.3, which is what we saw here. So this is what the partial derivative means. And this is true regardless of where in the cylinder we change the length. As long as the radius is three meters, wherever we change the length, so if we compare the difference between a cylinder of length seven and length six, again, we get that same change in volume of 28.3. And going back to the slides to get a think about this, what that means is that a chunk of the cylinder, you know, assuming that the radius is three, a chunk of the cylinder of one unit of length has a volume of 28.3. And so as we add more units of that length, we get you know, more and more volume. So that's the kind of geometrical visual understanding of what's going on here. To understand this even more deeply, as well as to illustrate an important point related to partial derivatives, let's also calculate del V del R. So the partial derivative of volume with respect to radius for a cylinder. So in that case, we treat pi and L as constants. I mean, pi is already a constant, but we can treat now L as a constant as well because we're not differentiating with respect to it. So we leave L intact, we leave pi intact, and we calculate the derivative of R squared. And according to the power rule, R squared becomes 2R. And then according to the constant multiple rule, we can bring the constants back into the picture. And so simplifying the way this looks a little bit, del V del R comes out to two pi R L. So now for the first time, we have a partial derivative where the variable that we are differentiating with respect to is included 
as well. So previously, that variable was never included. And so what this means is that we now need to start thinking in terms of infinitesimally small changes, which remember, this is a recurring theme in calculus. And so we've been talking about this since the very beginning of the Calculus One subject in this Machine Learning Foundation series. And so what this means is that a change in radius r does correspond to a change in volume by 2 pi r l. So in that sense, this is very similar to what we had when we were looking at the partial derivative with respect to length. But the key thing here now, because r is actually in the equation now, it means that this rule is only true at the exact point <laughs> where our radius has this radius. So it's a change in radius by an infinitesimally small amount does correspond to a change in volume by 2 pi r l. So let's have a look at this in code to make sense of it. Continuing along in our Jupyter notebook, let's now look for changes in v with respect to r which we already have from the slides. So we already have that partial derivative. We compute it on the slides manually that del v del r is equal to two pi r l. So we have already done a lot of the legwork here in PyTorch. We've already created our scalar tensor for radius of length three or of radius three and our length tensor of five meters. And so with those values, passing them through the cylinder volume function that gave us our volume v. So we can now finally look at what our grad is after having done that legwork earlier. And we see that del v del r comes out to 94.3. And this is the same as what we get if we plug in all of the variables manually into this partial derivative that we determined manually. So 2 times pi times 3 times 5, remember radius of 3 and length of 5, gives us that same number, 94.3. So if we now try to do the same kind of thing as we did earlier here, this kind of mathematics is now only going to prove true when we're working with an infinitesimally small change in R. Um, because of r being present in the partial derivative itself. So r is included in the partial derivative, so adjusting it affects the scale of its own impact on volume. So although this is our first example in this notebook or in this entire Machine Learning Foundation series of this happening, it is actually quite typical in calculus for the derivative only to apply at an infinitesimally small change, delta, in the variable that we're differentiating with respect to. So the smaller the delta r in this case, the closer to the true del v del r. So for example, at a small delta r of one times 10 to the negative six, so let's encode that delta here in scientific notation, at that very, very small delta, making an adjustment by that delta so if we had our cylinder of radius three and length five, and we compare the volume of a cylinder that is just slightly larger, the radius is just this small amount larger, and we need to divide the difference by the delta to restore the scale, but that gives us the same number, 94.3. The same number as we had when we used PyTorch to get the partial derivative, or when we used our manual derivation of the partial derivative. So you can experiment on your own time with making this delta larger, and you'll see that as you get to larger values, the correspondence between what we determined with autodiff or manual partial derivative calculations, it will start to be less true. <laughs> cool. Up next are comprehension exercises featuring more geometrical functions in order to solidify our understanding of the theory of relatively advanced partial derivatives.